In this lecture, we're going to focus on translation, specifically look at the four stages of translation. Remember, translation is the second half of the central dogma. The first half is where we have DNA being converted, or excuse me, DNA being used as a template to make RNA. That process is called transcription. And then the second thing that happens is RNA is used as a template to make proteins, and that process is called translation. So we're going to focus on translation today. Remember that translation occurs in the cytoplasm in eukaryotes. Okay, so you can see here translation is happening. In prokaryotes, remember, there is no uh, nucleus. So you know, we can't say it happens in the nucleoplasm or the cytoplasm. Uh, it's just happening within the bacterial cell. I want to point out some players here, too. You can see a lot of pictures, and I want to point out what different uh, structures are. So you can see here that um, the same for you know, prokaryotic and eukaryotic in terms of this, but uh, these huge blobs you see in the background here, these two circles, these are the ribosomal subunits. Uh, in prokaryotic organisms, the subunits, the small subunit is called 30S, the big subunit is called uh, 50S. In eukaryotes, the big, excuse me, the small subunit is called 40S, the big subunit is called 60S. In total, the prokaryotic ribosome is called 70S. And in uh, total, the eukaryotic ribosome is called ADS. You may wonder why the subunits of a ribosome don't add up to the total structure. In other words, what I mean is if the small subunit of the prokaryotic ribosome is 30S and the big subunit is 50S, that would equal 80, right? But in reality, we say the whole ribosome uh, complex for prokaryotes is 70S. The reason they're not additive, and the same is true for eukaryotes, right? The reason they're not additive is because um, S stands for something called Svedberg unit. And the Svedberg unit is basically the, um, uh, it's, it's a measure of how fast the molecule centrifuges out of solution when you centrifuge it. So you can see that when you centrifuge or pellet a molecule out of solution, it depends on the molecular weight, uh, it depends on the shape, it really depends on the density of the molecule. So that's why it's not really an additive property. Sort of a side note. Also in these structures, you'll see this large, uh, sort of long uh, red strand. That is the messenger RNA that's being threaded through the ribosomes. Uh, things that are not depicted in this picture are things like ribosomal RNA. Uh, that's also involved, and you'll see that later on. But we do see little transfer RNAs here. They look like hairpin structures. Uh, transfer RNAs are things that are carrying the amino acids. So the circle's an amino acid. This one is, this one is. Those are things you're going to see later on, too. Of course, we have the DNA, right, in the double helix. That's what's being transcribed. Uh, but in this lecture, we're really going to focus on, you know, this part here, the translation. So there's four stages to translation that you want to know. There is tRNA charging, initiation, elongation, and termination. So let's focus on those now. So whenever we talk about... Um, Oh, excuse me. So one thing I want to mention here, too, is that uh, here's our ribosome, right? Our large subunit, our small subunit. Whenever we start uh, translation, we always start at the AUG site on uh, the messenger RNA. I always think of the word augment. Augment is like to make something bigger, make it better, or to sort of begin something. Uh, and so I, I like to think of that. That's the universal start codon um, in, uh, in biology. Also, I want to point out here that when you have your growing amino acid chain, right, that's being made during translation, that's your protein that's being formed, the N-terminal end is always uh, translated first, and the C-terminal end is translated last. Okay, let's focus on tRNA charging now. So tR tRNA charging is the act of adding an amino acid to a tRNA. That's basically the definition of it. And... What happens is that the tRNA on this end down at the bottom here is something called an anticodon. It's a three-letter sequence, so like AUC or something like that. That will be the complement to a th three-letter sequence on the messenger RNA. So every time you have a codon on the messenger RNA, which is a three-letter sequence, it matches the anticodon on the tRNA. And each anticodon corresponds to a given amino acid. And we'll talk about that more later in the next lecture. So when we charge, basically at the very end of uh, the 3' prime end of the tRNA molecule, we usually have the sequence that goes CCA, and that last 3' prime uh, adenine, which you see here when we blow it up, that's where the amino acid is added to. 
and that they act what's called tRNA charging. Uh, and amino acid tRNA trans uh, synthetases are the enzymes that actually charge uh, the amino acid. The second part of translation is called initiation. When we talk about initiation, there's a lot of players here. So on this uh, slide, just keep in mind that I only want you to know the subunits or the molecules or the sequences that I point to specifically. So if I don't point to something right now or I don't discuss it, that's not something that you have to know. Uh, this is obviously translation initiation in prokaryotes. You can tell because we have a 50S subunit and a 30S subunit. What happens is basically this. We have a start codon here, this AUG again, on the messenger RNA. And just before it, we have something called a shine Delgarno sequence. Uh, it's just a sequence on the uh, messenger RNA that basically what's going to happen, you'll see here in a second, is this little molecule here, there's something called a ribosomal RNA, is going to uh, be complementary to the shine Del Delgarno sequence on the messenger RNA. The fact that it's complementary, what it's going to do is it is going to guide the small ribosomal subunit to the shine Delgarno sequence and, in essence, to this start codon or this initiation codon. That's sort of the role of the ribosomal RNA to guide the small ribosomal subunit there. The next thing that happens is the first tRNA will uh, hybridize to the, sh to the AU AUG start site. And you can see that it hybridizes in a uh, complementary fashion. So AUG is our codon, right? A set of three letters that encodes for amino acid. That's the definition of a codon. And then on the tRNA, you can see we have the anticodon. Wherever we have an A on the messenger RNA, we'll have a U on the tRNA, and so on. Now, the first uh, tRNA that, uh, that lands on here uh, forms this initiation complex. And it's always carrying the amino acid methionine. It's always carrying the amino acid methionine, sort of universal. The next step that happens here is that the large subul, excuse me, the large ribosomal subunit, uh, you know, binds onto this complex, and now we've formed our initiation complex. So how does uh, translation uh, initiation differ in eukaryotes? Well, there's a few differences. Uh, instead, instead of that shine Delgarno sequence we spoke of on the previous slide, now we have something called a COSAC consensus sequence. Just a different sequence, but you know, uh, you know, uh, it's like another consensus sequence. And so what happens also, though, you'll notice is that the messenger RNA has uh, a lot of secondary structure. In other words, it forms these loop structures in uh, eukaryotic uh, initiation of translation. And the ribosomal complex will interact with things called cap binding proteins as well as the poly A tail on the uh, eukaryotic messenger RNA. All of this basically um, helps stabilize the initiation complex. So something that's sort of different uh, in, pro sorry, in eukaryotes as opposed to prokaryotes. Okay, let's go about uh, elongation now. Let's talk about how that happens. So in elongation, I think of it as being three stages. Again, on this slide, if I talk about something, you want to make sure you know it. If I don't talk about it or don't point it out, it's something you don't have to know. It's just background of the slide. Basically, think of it as, as three parts here. So I'll, I'll draw them as circles, one, two, and three. Okay, so let's back up a second. So the first thing that happens is we already had initiation, right? So uh, methionine is guided in here. And you'll notice that the ribosomal complex, is, um, complex has three slots in it. I think of like a slot machine, almost like if you're gambling in Las Vegas or something. There's three slots. They're called E, P, and A. And I always think Environmental Protection Agency. Just a little mnemonic to remember it. Uh, it has nothing to do with that, but just to you know, remember it. Uh, e stands for exit, as you can see on the bottom here. P stands for peptidal, and A stands for amino acid. And what happens is the first tRNA is brought into the P slot and it carries methionine. That's unusual. Usually every tRNA arrives in the A slot. The first tRNA is just an exception. Okay, everything after that will arrive in the A slot. So I think A arrival, even though that's not what it stands for. So then you can see that uh, AUG is the first codon. Here's our first anticodon. It's carrying methionine. Then this is what happens in elongation. A second tRNA will land, uh, and it'll be its anticodon will be complementary to the codon. It will carry a second amino acid. Then what happens if you uh, fast forward to the second circle? You have these two amino acids lying next to each other by uh, being hooked on by two adjacent tRNA molecules. What happens is they form a, pe a peptide bond. 
you have these two amino acids forming a dipeptide bond. Once that's formed, the whole complex moves over one slot. And you can see that whatever tRNA used to be in A goes to P. So you can see that here. IgGG used to be in A. Now it's in the P slot. And the one that was in the P slot, that tRNA, will move over to the E slot, and E stands for exit. So in other words, you know, it's ejected from that complex. You might think, oh no, it's gonna, we're going to lose that methionine, but we're not, because it is um, bound to glycine through a peptide bond. So now we have this structure where we have, you know, the second tRNA is now in the P slot. Now we have two amino acids as opposed to one, so our polypeptide, polypeptide chain is growing. And now we're ready for the next tRNA to land in the A slot. So that's what happens during elongation. The last thing I want to talk to you about today is termination. So how does termination occur? Well, um, translational termination happens in this sense. So eventually what happens is on the mRNA we'll something called the stop codon. And there's usually uh, three stop codons that exist. And so this is one of the three. What happens is once you have a stop codon here, uh, you could see that something called a release factor is going to bind to that stop codon. I think of a release factor as being, you know, sort of analogous to a tRNA that doesn't have an amino acid on it. Uh, it's, you know, not a perfect uh, example, but I think of it in that sense. So here we have this release factor one. What happens? It binds here to that A slot. Everything shifts over, but there's no new amino acid for this chain to latch onto uh, through a polypeptide bond. Since there's no uh, amino acid for it to latch onto, not only is this tRNA ejected, but so is the growing peptide strand. And now we have our protein that's formed. In